Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace wrapping in on you. Uh, actually taking a break in the day, heading to the gym. Uh, for those of you who are participating in the 60 day holistic health challenge, uh, let's make it happen. Uh, no excuses, absolutely no excuses. Uh, for those of you who have been sending your well wishes, who have been wishing me a speedy recovery uh, after my health scare a couple of weeks ago, uh, you don't know how much that means to me. Uh, I don't take it for granted. Uh, I appreciate it. And I just want to let you know that I am well on my way to a full recovery. I'm not 100% yet, uh, but I'm very close. I'm so far ahead of where I was uh, when all this first went down. So again, I want to thank you for that. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, we are in the middle of fighting uh, YouTube and Google to get our channel back and up. And so we're funneling things over to uh, the backup until then. Uh, and obviously there are some disadvantages and some uh, liabilities and setbacks as far as that goes. But we're doing what we have to do. We're, we're making sure that we uh, are not laying down and, and uh, playing the victim role. We're moving forward one way or another. Uh, I would definitely love to be operating from my primary channel uh, for uh, some obvious and not so obvious reasons, but that's not the case. But we're going to keep moving forward. We're going to keep speaking truth to power. We're going to keep sharing. We're going to keep connecting. Um, that's sort of what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, again, uh, I cannot iterate enough the importance of the fact that we need your support uh, financially. Uh, our fundraising efforts have suffered all year long and definitely have suffered since uh, the channel went down. Channel being down does not negate the need, it actually uh, enhances it. So, we really and truly need your support, and I'll remind you of that uh, through, through the video. And you know, as we move forward in whatever we're doing from this point on, uh, we're, we're, we're approaching the close of the year, and there are so many things that are going wrong in the black community, too many to even. Uh, list here but we're dealing with uh an intensified and increased uh risk of sexual and uh sex sex trafficking human trafficking uh and black females are the most targeted uh and there are reasons for that i've covered some of those reasons uh, i've shared a video from uh brother reza uh who also uh highlighted some of the reasons that our women are targeted so uh, viciously and it's up to us to address those issues uh, so I'm going to be hitting this channel high and heavy I'm going to be loading some old videos that are still prevalent and I'm going to be adding new videos at a pretty rapid pace in comparison to how it's normally done because of the intensified need to address these issues. We can't go into 2020 with the same mindset, with the same level of casual engagement that we have moved into each previous year and through each previous year. We don't have the luxury of casual engagement. Um, I was once told that when you approach life so casually, you become a casualty and it is proving itself to be immensely true. Uh, what I wanna do is I want to challenge everybody that watches this video to be aware of the things that, that are harming us, to be aware of the fact that our children are being miseducation and miseducated and indoctrinated into a mindset and a state of being that is immensely detrimental to their well-being over the long term. Be aware of the fact that we are economically impotent because we have poor spending habits, because we have uh, a misunderstanding of money and how it operates, and that we lack the capacity and the willingness to practice uh, group economics on a vertical scale. Uh, be aware of the fact that the, fa the disintegration of the black family uh, is wreaking havoc on our ability to address many of these issues because the family uh, is the institution through which 
values, interests, and principles are taught, perpetuated, and sustained. When you don't have a solid family uh, environment through which you teach these principles, then they have to be learned in the school of hard knocks, and it puts you behind the eight ball. We have so much that we are struggling with that it can be overwhelming. It becomes daunting uh, to the average person because it doesn't seem that, that there's any hope. But what I want to share with you today is that there is hope, that we are actually making progress even though it will never be uh, highly po uh, publicized. But we are definitely making some progress. We're not making it nearly at the rate that we need to, but we are moving forward. What we must do now is we must learn how to connect with one another. We cannot sit back and practice any type of empowerment from an individualized mindset. Individual, individualism is the enemy of black progress. We must learn how to connect with one another. We must learn how to uh, collaborate with one another. We must learn how to put our petty differences aside. We must learn how to see the beauty in the connectivity of our blackness, in the uniqueness of our personalities, and stop trying to make everybody think the exact same way we think, see exactly what we see. And we need to learn how to love blackness, not just in the way we present blackness, but in the way that blackness exists in its many different facets and colors and, and, and personalities and uh, aspirations and desires. It's so important that we rise right now. I cannot express enough the importance of rising up to meet the challenge of unity. That is the greatest fear of white America is black unity. And we do them a favor when we consistently find differences to bicker about and attack one another about. You know, uh, we've got work to do. I, you know, I've talked to Marion on a regular basis about the work that we're doing. Uh, like I said, she was out this past weekend with the girls. Uh, and it's so much that these babies have gone through already in their lives. They're not even adults yet. And they've gone through some some things that most women will never go through and we're talking about the need to get it done and a lot of what's stopping it is bickering among the people who have the capacity to get it done we have to stop sitting in the background we have to stop sitting back and looking shaking my hand as a comment does nothing for the issue you know you know posting sad as a comment does nothing for the issue you know to, is you know is it possible that social media can be a powerful instrument and tool in the empowerment of black uh, blacks in the education of black youth in, in in the advancement of black entrepreneurship absolutely but it cannot be solely through the uh, responsive or reactive uh, uh, contributions of shaking my head and oh my god that's not going to get it done. What's going to get it done is saying, okay, how can I fit in? What can I do? You know, maybe I'm not the out front person. Maybe I'm not a, the up front person. So who can I see that's willing to step out, be out front that I can get behind? Who can I fund? Who can I sit up and offer my services in whatever it is I do? Who, I mean, there's so many different ways that we should be doing this that we're not. And, and, and it's costing us dearly. And so I'm challenging you to be extremely active, to push yourself. What we do in the next two years is gonna have a massive impact on how the next 20 looks. We can't consistently push and fall behind, you know, and, and expect to ever gain ground. We, at some point, we've gotta make a move. At some point, it's gotta stop being about individualism and starts being, start being about collectivism. It's gotta start being about, uh, what we can do as a unit, what we can do as a team. Who can we get behind? Like I said, I know a lot of people doing some exceptional and extraordinary things, but they're, they're hamstrung because they can't get the funding. They're hamstrung because nobody will get behind them. There's a person out there right now. They're, maybe they're not going to see this video, but they're out there. There's a person out there that can single-handedly fund what we're doing at the Odyssey Project. Nobody looks that deep. Nobody looks that far. Nobody's willing to make those type of sacrifices, not on a grand scale. Everybody's out there struggling, and we seem to have this ability to look at and 
uh, focus on what someone else isn't doing or why someone else is failing or why this person doesn't deserve support. And it's, I've learned that when you are doing what you're supposed to do, when you're really truly engaged and in, 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 in invested in doing what it is you should be doing, that's very little time to be critiquing and criticizing and tearing down. If somebody's not doing what they're supposed to do, it'll be revealed, it'll come out. My grandmother told me the way you expose the lies is by living the truth. So I don't run around trying to point out different things I see people doing because I'm not perfect and I'm trying to get this thing right because I don't want to die and have left the world in the same condition I found it. And so my goal is to do something about that. And so I'm challenging you. Let's stand up and let's close this year out strong in whatever way that you deem it's necessary for you to do. For those of you who want to support the work we're doing, we need you. And uh, the links are always going to be available in the description box of how you can support us. For those who want to start your own campaign, for those who got somebody else you want to support, be engaged. Let that be your challenge. Be engaged. On that note, I've just arrived at the gym. I'm about to jump out of here and get in and uh, handle this part of my commitment to myself and my family. Uh, I love you guys. I appreciate it. Once again, thanks for your support. Thanks in advance for your support. And we'll talk soon.